Hey, I'm Melissa here. I'm at Dragon Man's. If you don't know about Dragon Man's, we are a multi-recreational facility in Colorado Springs. We have shooting ranges, farm store, paintball parks, dirt bike tracks, a military museum. We give farm training classes and uh, it's just been a fun place for people to come for years and years. We're the longest running shooting range in Colorado Springs. We've been here since 1982. Now, if you've been watching this channel, I've just been trying to keep you guys all up to date on what's going on uh, with Colorado gun bills. Uh, there's been a lot of them, more than any that we've ever seen in any given year. So naturally, I do feel like the gun community feels like it is kind of a personal attack because there is, they're just coming at every angle, a lot of these representatives. And um, I'm just going to break it down and let you guys all know the current status of a lot of these. So a couple of days ago, I made a video on um, the uh, pending assault, uh, semi-automatic, I don't like to call it the assault uh, weapons bill because they are not assault weapons. They are just semi-automatic firearms and it is a ban bill essentially to ban 80% of the firearms that we would sell here at Dragon Man's and any other given firearm store in Colorado. It's one of the worst bills, worse than California, worse than Washington, because not only does it specify the aesthetics uh, and if it has one or uh, two or more of certain criteria, but then it also just outright bans certain makes and models. So even if it were compliant, uh, based off of that make and model, it would still be illegal. That one has currently been assigned to Senate committee. So it did pass the House, which it shouldn't even have made it that far. And last video, I had said that it went to um, a committee that we didn't want it to go to. There's three Democrats and two Republicans. What is interesting is it was, we all thought it would be on the schedule this week, Tuesday or Wednesday, and we'd all be testifying uh, publicly. However, it has not um, been given a date and we don't know if that's because they feel like the Senate doesn't have the votes, so therefore they don't want to waste time on it. Um, or they just want to get through a lot of other bills first before they know that they have to devote a lot of time on this one. Legislative here in Colorado uh, only goes until May 8th, so every state is different. Some states pass bills all year round. Colorado legislation starts in January and ends in May, and this year it's going to end on May 8th. After May 8th, they cannot pass any more bills. So we're hoping that the clock is on our side and the time runs out and some of these bills just don't make it through. Uh, when that date does get announced, if it gets announced, we'll definitely be sure to put it on our Dragon Man's page and let everyone know that they can sign up. It's really easy to sign up to publicly testify. Um, we'll put the link. It's, you know, you click like two different things and then you just fill in some information and you're ready to go and you can do it via Zoom or in person. All right, so that's going to be HB 24-1292. The other bills that have currently made some headway is the ones that are on Governor Polis's desk. So the secure firearm storage in a vehicle, um, which obviously isn't the worst thing, but obviously no one is trying to just leave their farms in vehicles to get stolen. But if you do do that, presumptively you will get fined a lot if uh, they find out that it wasn't locked up. Uh, the concealed carry permits and training bill. It says that you need to now take classroom and live fire training on a range. Now, if you want to get your concealed carry permit in Colorado, the class has to be eight hours long and you have to take a written test. Uh, and then thereafter, you have to take another class to do a renewal every two years. Uh, I think that's a little excessive. I don't think people should get re have to go through training again every two years, um, but that's what we're up against. So again, more money that you'll be paying to stay up to date on your concealed carry permit. The prohibiting carrying farms um, in sensitive spaces is also about to get uh, signed, if it does get signed at all. And that one essentially says that you cannot conceal carry, even if you have your concealed carry permit, in uh, government buildings, college campuses, and polling places. Last, the farms merchant category code is saying that if you purchase anything in a farm store, it's going to be tracked and potentially flagged and be under the category of firearms. Here at Dragon Man's will be exempt because we have multiple things going on. So we won't be under the merchant category code of firearms. Neither will Shields, neither will Cabela's. So it kind of defeats the whole point of this bill, right? So if people go shopping now at Shields, Cabela's, buy a lot of ammo, they actually won't get flagged. So where do you think, you know, potential shooter might go shopping at? So with those bills that have now passed Senate, if you uh, could do something, uh, which we highly recommend, is to um, now email Governor Polis's office. He can be reached at governorpolis at state.co.us and let him know why he should not be signing these bills into law. All right, some other uh, bills making headway. So yesterday, the Farm Liability Insurance Requirement was passed through the Senate Testimony Committee. 
on a uh, party line vote of three to two. So uh, not surprising because we do have majority Democrat here in our Senate and our House. Uh, there are 12 Republican senators among the 35. This upcoming election is gonna be really important. This farm liability insurance will require all gun owners to now carry liability insurance. And uh, this is wild because they don't even really tell you where to get it. And there's huge penalty fines if you don't have it. Um, we would be the only state in the country to require gun owners to have this liability insurance. They will be um, voting on that. It'll go up to its first Senate reading and then its second, third. Through each reading, they do a vote on it. Think about, uh, they, they talk about amendments and then eventually it gets to Governor Polis's desk if it makes it through all of those votes. The Farms and Excise Tax Bill is awaiting uh, to be scheduled the date for public testimony in the Senate. So again, now you can sign up and you can publicly testify and let them know why you should not be paying 9% on guns and ammo. So pair that with the liability insurance, pair that with uh, the increased fees for concealed carry permits, all of the penalty fines. It is now just becoming extremely expensive to be gun owner in Colorado, which is probably the intent there. And um, I believe that there is something in the Constitution saying that if uh, there is fees, you know, over a certain threshold that it can be found unconstitutional. So I uh, really see a lot of these, um, if they are passed into law, immediately being hit with a lawsuit and... Uh, um, we'll see what happens with that because a lot of these are not constitutional whatsoever. The next one's going to be the firearm dealer requirement and permit, just requiring a lot more stuff for gun stores. If this one passes, I do not see very many people wanting to open a gun store. Um, and I see a lot of gun stores actually closing. This will impose a lot more fines and requirements and now will be audited by the Department of Revenue and also ATF um, on a state level and a federal level. Um, what people don't realize is a lot of the fees to create that Department of Revenue will require a lot of additional funding and the fees that actually the gun stores will be paying won't cover all those. So guess where that money is coming? It's coming from the taxpayers. So it does eventually um, affect you guys. And that one will be um, given a date for you to public, publicly testify against as well. All right, so that's what's going on in Colorado with the current bills that are um, going through. And again, the last day for legislative session is May 8th. So you know, hopefully time is just on our side, but still keep calling your senators, still keep, you know, letting Governor Polis know not to sign these. And then if you don't know what, who your uh, Senate rep is or your House district rep, I'm going to put a link in this post so that you can actually just put in your zip code and figure out who your senator is and who your House representative representative is. If you are unhappy with the way that things have gone this year, um, you can, you know, definitely get to the polls, obviously, in November. We're highly encouraging you to do that because uh, some of these representatives honestly just fill vacancy spots. So we're one of five states in the country that allow uh, certain committees, the Senate committees, the state committees, um, to basically select people to put them into vacant spots. So if someone um, gave up their seat because they retired or for whatever reason, they actually select a person who is not elected uh, by their county to fill that spot. One of the main sponsors of the uh, assault ban bill uh, was Timothy Hernandez. He was not elected and he is just filling a vacancy spot. So why they can now enact bills that would affect all of us when we didn't even vote them in, I don't know how that's plausible. And I definitely would like to see some of these people voted out who, you know, the general population didn't even want them to be there in the first place. What else? Um, if you would like to help, last thing I would like to mention is um, Dragon Man's will be partnering with Rocky Mountain Gun Owners. They are one of the um, only gun organizations, nonprofits, basically fighting for a lot of these uh, bills, um, publicly testifying on every bill, and they will be the ones filing a lot of the lawsuits if some of these go through. We will be going to um, a fundraising banquet uh, in June. Um, that they'll be hosting and based off of the tier level that we provide funding for, that we pay for, all of those proceeds will then go to RMGO. So if you guys would like to contribute to that, you can essentially donate to us to get a higher tier level, get more advertising, and essentially then all of that money goes to Rocky Mountain Gun Owners to help fight lawsuits and then also fund some campaigns to get uh, more rightful people maybe fill in these um, party seats. So. That's it. I'll be sure to update you guys if there's a lot more headway, and I'm sure there will be because we still have two more weeks of uh, legislation. So thanks for watching, and be sure to check out all the links that I provide, and you guys will have a great day.